So we're now going to work a problem that I call total response via convolution. And we're not going to work out a lot of details. This is really kind of just piecing together a lot of the results from these examples that we've been working. So let's consider a discrete time LTI system that's described by the following difference equation. y of k plus 2 minus 0.6 times y of k plus 1 minus 0.16 y of k equals 5 times f of k plus 2. So that's the system. It has initial conditions at minus 1, y is equal to 0. At time minus 2, y is equal to 25 over 4. And the input is equal to 2 to the negative k, u of k. So this is the same system, the same initial conditions, and the same input as we've been looking at in a variety of examples over the last several videos. What we're asked to do is we're asked to find the total response. So we're going to find the y that solves this difference equation. We know that the total response can be written as the sum of two pieces. One is the zero input response. The other is the zero state response. So let's, let's walk through this. So it turns out we already computed these pieces. So a while ago we worked a problem called difference equation number one. And in difference equation number one, we actually solved for the zero input response. The zero input response we denote as y sub zero. And in that problem, we solved for what it was equal to. The zero input response was equal to 0 0.2 times minus 0.2 to the k plus 0.8 times 0.8 to the k. So that's part of the, part of the puzzle. In an uh, example we worked a while back called closed form solution for h of k, we solved for the impulse response of this system. So we solved for h of k, and we figured out that it was equal to minus 0.2 to the k plus 4 times 0.8 to the k u of k. So we've previously solved for the impulse response of this system. And the impulse response is what I need to solve for the zero state response. The zero state response is something we just solved for. The problem we worked called analytic approach, where we did discrete time convolution using table lookup. We actually used these tables of convolutions, and we used it to compute the convolution of h of k with 2 to the negative k u of k. This is what we call the zero state response. We did this and we figured out that the zero state response was equal to this quantity right here. So this was the zero state response. So all of these pieces put together gives us the total response. So the total response is the zero input response plus the zero state response. So that's y zero, the zero input response, and this is the zero state response. So if you were just given this problem without having worked all these previous things, those would be the things you would need to do. You would have to compute the zero input response. You would have to compute the impulse response. You would have to compute the zero state response. And then you would have to piece these things together. I call this example total response via convolution since we are using discrete time convolution to compute the zero state response. In previous, previous examples that we worked, we solved for the zero state response using what I called the classical difference equation approach. And that's where you basically guess a form of the forced response, plug it into the equation, and then solve for the constants. I'm calling this total response via convolution because we're figuring out the zero state response using the impulse response convolved with the system input. Either way you work this out, whether you do it this way, the sum of the zero input response plus the zero state response, or if you work it kind of the mathematical difference equation way where you sum up the natural response plus the force response, you'll get the same answer, but they are, the nomenclature that we use is different.